Folks, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men who right now are facing murder charges. We're talking about Travis and Gregory McMichael, that's son and father, as well as William Bryan, a neighbor of theirs. Now, all of them right now, again, are charged with murder. Now, this is following the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery. Ahmaud Arbery was shot and killed there in Brunswick, Georgia, uh, back in 2020, in February of 2020. Brunswick right now is where Renata de Gregorio is. She is right outside of the Glynn County Courthouse, where court is set to resume in about 30 minutes at 9 this morning. I'm Keith and Nelson. We're going to get right into things because Renata just actually rushed back to this camera. This is following a press conference that was held earlier this morning. He was trying to separate himself and his client from the other attorney as well. And now we're up to Tuesday and here this is still a really big deal that is people are still talking about here. We know more is going to happen on Thursday as well. Um, you mentioned something very important there, Renata. We are not just talking about black pastors in that na in that area, though the release that was sent out to us did say it was uh, members of the uh, black uh, community there that were coming together. We are talking about um, people from all denominations there uh, that have gathered. I know the Glenn Clergy for Equity, that includes more than 50 clergymen all throughout Glen County, again, from different denominations, not just black. Everyone there pretty much not just showing their support for Arbery, but for the community as a whole. Um, now, this morning as they met, they did say that they were there to, to pray and, again, I'll pay for peace. We know we're expecting a large gathering there on Thursday. Renata, let's look ahead to Thursday and what you know so far about what we're expecting to happen then. Yes, we know that the Reverend Al Sharpton is expected to be here again. Of course, we have the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who we're expecting inside the courtroom all week this week. Um, Attorney Lee Merritt, who we've seen a lot with Wanda Cooper Jones, mother, and then the nationally known attorney Ben Crump. He's expected to be here as well, and they're going to be leading that prayer vigil. But this whole week, they've just been inviting and telling people from across the country, so not just Brunswick anymore, but everyone who wants to support this family, the Arbery family, and who is in the faith community to come out and pray with them. I know yesterday when the Reverend Jesse Jackson just got here, Barbara Arnwine, she's with the Transformative Justice Coalition, who they're the group that you see every day next to the courthouse. There are some tents. They're set up right now with chairs, and there are people, supporters sitting there. Some of them are the aunts of Maud Arbery, but a lot of them are from the Transformative Justice Coalition. So Barbara Arnwine, who's with them, she was the one who was really uh, saying yesterday when Reverend Jesse Jackson got here that everyone who's a faith part of any faith group in the country come here on Thursday. And that'll be at 11 a.m. And just to clarify things so people understand, so where this black pastors, uh, I'm going to use quotation marks and this came from, was uh, Kevin Goff. So he's the attorney for William Bryan. He said this last week, Thursday, as Renata mentioned, that he didn't want to see um, any more black pastors inside of the courtroom. Clearly, this was a jarring comment that did spark a response. On that very day, we saw a lot of people tweeting about it, writing about it, talking about it. Um, and over the weekend, it kind of grew because then we saw um, this, this call for 100 black pastors to converge there in Brunswick, which again, we're expecting on 
Thursday, but this took on an even uh, bigger meaning because we're not just expecting black pastors. We're expecting pastors of all denominations, all races, clearly, uh, to converge there in, in Brunswick on Thursday. And just this morning, we saw them gathering uh, outside of the courthouse there right behind you where Renata is right now um, going all over all of this. And Renata, as I mentioned, you have been there uh, since the very start, five weeks ago now. Can you describe the, the scene for us, what is going on at this point as opposed to how it was when things first started five weeks ago? Yeah, that's actually what I wanted to, uh, before you even said, opposed to how it was before, I want to talk about the transformation. So when we got here, it was still, I mean, it was still the same people. We're, you know, uh, one woman who I know, Tristan Hardy, he spoke with, did a whole story on. She's in her 80s and comes with her walker every single day. It's the Arbery family supporters, a few of them from the Transformative Justice Coalition. They've been here just the entire time. But it is a little bit different because I know at the start, there was just, it's still extremely somber, but it was more of a feeling of like, okay, here we go. We're going to start this. We're going to get through it together. And then as the trial has been progressing, I know when um, the Reverend Al Sharpton got here, after that, we started seeing, um, I spoke with one woman who brought her three kids because she was like, you know, this, I didn't just go to school with Ahmaud Arbery. This isn't something that is just us here in this community. My kids need to see how big that this is mm -hmm. and how these civil rights leaders are coming here and just get them involved. So then there was um, a little bit of a, a peak of, you know, people were more energized. And then just as more information keeps coming out um, with everything with Kevin Goff, it was, I don't want to use the word uh, anger or like frustration exactly, but you could tell people aren't just somber. They're also kind of like, this, this isn't okay is basically what they're saying to us. So that's more of the feeling of how it's been outside here, but it's really the same people. And that's something that we've been hearing from the faith leaders as well is, um, at the very beginning, we had those two buses full of people that came from across the country, you know, and there was a lot of energy and people were chanting every single day. Here, when they do it now, it's more of a smaller group that does it. They do it every time the arboreys come in and out of the courtroom just to show their support. But they're the ones that are going to be left after all this is over. They're the ones that live here and will continue living here. And that's something they continue to point out as well. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. Folks, if you're just now joining us, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the murder trial. Three men right now uh, on trial for murder in the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad Arbery was shot and killed there in Brunswick, Georgia, back in February of 2020. The first arrest was made in this case a few months later, back in May of that year. Fast forward now, we're in November of 2021, and the Arbery family out there, you'll hear from them time and time again, saying that at this point, they want justice. We know that we have heard um, just yesterday, or perhaps the day before, things are starting to blend in a little bit. It would have been Monday yesterday. We heard that the uh, attorneys were asking for, all three defense attorneys, rather, asking for a mistrial in this case. This is following the appearance of uh, Jesse Jackson there in the courthouse. They're saying that these faith leaders, uh, well-known civil rights leaders, uh, causing a distraction. They believe in some case perhaps even intimidating jurors. That is according to the defense attorneys, particular Kevin Goff, uh, we've, who we've heard from time and time again. Some are calling his comments a distraction because um, no doubt people are talking about what he has to say. And again, if you're joining us, what you're seeing right now is uh, Renata DiGregorio. I'm Keith Nelson here at the First Coast News Studios in Jacksonville, Florida. Renata DiGregorio is at the Glen County Courthouse in uh, downtown Brunswick. The courthouse is actually right behind her. You'll see a few people standing up out there. Uh, the demonstrators that she mentioned are, are there pretty much every day. They have been since the very beginning. The, the numbers are pretty small at this point, but on Thursday, we're expecting a large influx of people. So uh, again, Renata, let's look ahead to Thursday. Folks are just now joining us. Fill them in about what we're expecting to happen on Thursday. Yeah, so it's been... Um been being said since last week when Kevin Goff made the comments about not wanting any more black pastors in the courtroom. That is when most of the pastors around who have been here and a lot of the religious leaders said, let's bring 100 black pastors to fill the swan out here. So we don't know exactly how many we're talking about right now, and it probably won't all be black pastors because just this morning at 8 a.m. we had religious leaders from all across this community, all the denominations that came and were together. They always pray together. The supporters who out, are out here, they're not just black pastors either. They're people from 
all over the place. And we've also been seeing a few new people. I know we were talking about the core group it is mostly the same, but I know, I think at the beginning of last week, the weeks are all kind of blending together. We're in week five now, but a, uh, a lady, she's a, a little bit older and she has a small dog named Poppy. I remember the dog's name. I can't remember her name, but um, she she came here and now she and her friend are a fixture here as well. So there are some more people who weren't here in the beginning, but now they are here every single day. And so, of course, we're expecting them to be here tomorrow or on Thursday. And we're also expecting uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton to be back, as well as a nationally known civil rights attorney, Ben Crump, and attorney Lee Merritt, who we see often with Wanda Cooper Jones and Maude Arbery's mother here. Mm-hmm. So we are expecting to see them as well as all these religious leaders back again. I did get a call last night from um, Jordan Davis's father, Ron Davis, telling me that he plans on being there on, on Thursday as well. So it is expected to be a pretty large showing. Uh, Jordan Davis, by the way, was a, a big case here for us in Jacksonville, really nationally. Uh, Jordan was shot and killed back in 2012 at a gas station here in Jacksonville on City South Side. Um, uh, his murderer, by the way, right now is uh, in jail. He is uh, serving a life sentence without parole. Um, by the way, in that case, Michael Dunn is who we're talking about there. So that as well is another uh, huge case, very similar to this one, a lot of similarities. Um, I, we did a report with Ron Davis actually in depth, him telling us what he went through uh, during the two trials. It took two trials before a jury finally convicted uh, Michael Dunn, and uh, he went into detail about what he went through during that time. That right now is on our website at firstcoastnews.com. Also on our website, you're going to find detailed information about this particular case um, with these three, mile, three men right now on trial for, for murder. We're talking about Gregory and Travis McMichael, father and son, as well as their uh, neighbor, William Bryan. Um, Renata, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us. I know that you have a lot going on as well. Now, besides what we're expecting on Thursday, we did hear from some faith leaders uh-huh. earlier this morning. Uh, fill us in about what they had to say. Oh, yeah. Well, they um basically wanted to address Kevin Goff's comments, which were on Thursday. So like we said earlier, that happened Thursday. Now we're on Tuesday. This is still one of the biggest things out here that people are talking about. They said that they felt like his comments were an attack on them, the religious leaders in this community, all the denominations. They also called for justice for Ahmad, and they're hoping that they can all come together and pray because that has been a big thing too. I know um, just yesterday, I believe it was yesterday when Ahmad Arbery's mother was walking into the courtroom. They called her over and were like, wait, Wanda, like come over here and pray with us for her. So she took a minute. Usually she'll just walk in, but she went over. They all just had that moment before she headed inside. And their biggest thing though was just that they felt like his comments, Goff's comments needed to be addressed publicly. And we've seen a lot of people address it publicly, but so far it hasn't been the people here in this community who are religious leaders and personally took offense to it. And we do want to know, Goff did end up apologizing after the comment on Thursday, apologized on Friday. Some say it was an empty apology, but nevertheless, it was uh, made. Renata, you mentioned Wanda Cooper Jones, Ahmaud Arbery's mother. You had a chance to speak with her on several occasions during the time that you've been there, again, for five weeks now during the duration of this trial thus far. Uh, Yesterday, we heard some very emotional um, things that were going on inside of the courtroom. Uh, She cried out at a point when a photo of her son was shown, Ahmaud Arbery, as well as when the murder weapon, the shotgun, we saw someone with it in their hand. It was shown in the courtroom. She had a chance to see it for the first time with her very own eyes. And again, another very emotional moment. You can only a mother imagine a mother seeing the murder weapon used to, to kill her child. So uh, take us back to that moment and what you know about what happened there in the courtroom. Yeah, so it was one of the um, investigators, the GBI agents who were showing the shotgun that was used to kill Ahmaud Arbery and Wanda Cooper Jones, like you said, she kind of cried out with emotion and she spoke with us later about that. She'll come outside and speak. We have a podium set up and she'll just speak with the reporters there. And she said she had thought about that shotgun a lot of times. She had tried to picture it. And so finally being able to see it was really hard for her. And you could tell that that was something just seeing the murder weapon or excuse me the the weapon that killed her son uh you could tell that she was just very somber tone which is normal but talking about that was very emotional for her and i know that uh you actually mentioned kiva that trayvon martin's mother 
made a post, I saw it on Twitter, it may be posted elsewhere as well, but reaching out to Wanda Cooper Jones and telling her that it was okay to have that emotion and to share that with her, trying to comfort her as well. Because during that time, when she was in the courtroom, that's when the Reverend Jesse James comforted her and some of the jurors exactly. mm -hmm. apparently saw it. Yeah, and so that is part of why all three of the defendant's attorneys were calling for a mistrial right after that. Uh, as you speak, Renata, I'm trying to look for that um, post that I did see by... Um, oh, yeah, I might have Martin's it right mother. I'm trying to see the exact verbiage, if I can find it here. Oh, okay. I have it. Do you, you have want it? me to yeah. read it? Yeah. Okay, it says... Uh, it, it's now blue. I don't know if you yeah, can see that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says, uh, Wanda Cooper Jones, oh, that's parentheses, okay. Ahmad Arbery's mom. You can cry if you want to. If it makes some people feel uncomfortable, then oh well. Uh, we love and support you. Hashtag com. Yeah. So, so again, one mother who who lost her son. Um, reaching out to another. Um, this is both really tragic cases for sure. Let's go inside of the courtroom briefly. Renata, you were on Good Morning Jacksonville with us earlier this morning. So from what you do uh, know, tell us about what we can expect today looking ahead. Yeah, so today at 9 a.m., so we got about 12 minutes. They've been starting pretty much on time. Um, we're going to hear from the medical examiner first. They are still in the state's witnesses. So but that's what we kind of expected because uh, attorney Jason Sheffield said last week, we'll probably have a few more days of state's witnesses. Then they have to go through all of the defense's witnesses. So not sure what the timeline is looking at for when the state will end, but they are hoping to get to closing arguments for Thanksgiving. Uh, I know that's next week. It's all kind of coming up very quickly, but we will hear more state testimony today and then they'll move on to the yeah, we do know the goal was to have this wrapped up before Thanksgiving. Still still a possibility. Yeah, speaking with our, our FCN analysts, I'm told that is still a possibility. Um, it was expected that the state would rest by Wednesday, Thursday. We don't know what will happen. And there's so many interruptions happening in, inside of the courtroom as, as well. Um, and we want to mention this. I believe you said it earlier this morning on, on a Good Morning Jacksonville, is that a lot of people who are watching from – and. and from the outside looking in, they're probably wondering why is all of this happening with the jurors in the courtroom. So we want to make it clear, a lot of the times when we're seeing this back and forth between the defense, the state, as well as the judge, the jurors are not in the actual room. They've been asked to, to step out during those um, spirited conversations, let's just say. Uh, so they're not there. So a lot of us are, are we're, we're looking through a window, we're seeing what's happening, but the jurors, they're, they, they're not there for, for this um, still. Uh, it is a question, can these defendants get a fair trial? What are the jurors actually uh, taking in? What are they actually learning from, from outside uh, sources? Uh, we, we shall wait to see what happens um, with that. Now, there was another moment uh, yesterday, and we've seen this before, but Marcus Arbery, while we saw Wanda sit in there and cry out at times when she saw certain things like her son's photo or, or the shotgun, Marcus, he takes a different approach. He doesn't stay in there for these things. We've seen him get up and walk out. We saw it again yesterday. Yeah, and that, I know we've talked to him when, sometimes when he comes out of the courtroom, he'll be with Barbara Arnwine. At one point, it was when they were going through all of those pictures of um, about Arbery just lying there, bloodied. They were really graphic, and he left for all of that. And when he came outside, he said, like, I'm not going to be re-traumatized by this, mm -hmm. to that effect. And they, Barbara Arnwine was standing there with him, just kind of, trying to put the people who are listening into his shoes. Like, can you imagine being a father, seeing these of your son? And so, yeah, he has been leaving the courtroom, whereas uh, um, Wanda Cooper Jones has stayed. We know that the Reverend has been speaking with her. There are a couple of photos. We have video of them speaking quietly close together. And we'll be keeping an eye on, I want to mention as well, the jurors that you were talking about, because whenever we get the pool notes, just to kind of give people an idea of how it works, is there are a couple reporters who are inside the actual courtroom. Everyone else gets the notes that they send because there aren't that many people that are allowed inside. People are allowed in the overflow room, but not in the one with the actual jurors. So what happens is they will be watching the jury and kind of see how they react, if they have any facial expressions or show any type of emotion where they're looking. So we'll definitely be paying attention to that as well as we move forward with things and where it's going. All right, folks, it's now 8.51 and about nine minutes or so. We're expecting court to resume. 
Right now we are going into day eight of testimony in this trial there in Brunswick, Georgia. This is the murder trial. Three men right now accused of uh, shooting and killing Ahmaud Arbery there in Brunswick, Georgia back in February of 2020. Now today we are expecting more witnesses to take the stand um, for the state. Now today I believe Renata we are expecting to hear from yeah prosecutors will call the medical examiner as their first witness. So again there could be some gruesome testimony today a, a lot of things that will likely cause um, emotions to be evoked from the parents of Ahmaud Arbery. We'll see if Marcus stays in there today or or, or see what Wanda has to say about all of that. And uh, Renata you're one of our dedicated reporters that have been there again since the very beginning. This is not an easy job at all because you are hearing the raw emotions, not just from the family, as you can imagine, after losing their loved one, but also from that community. The community of Brunswick, we need to talk about as well. They are hurting as well from all of this, and, and even the, the impacts really is the spotlight being shown on this small community. And you talk to people there, and they tell you, we don't want this attention, but unfortunately, it is here. And once all the cameras go, there's a lot of healing that is going to be need, need to be done within that community. So, Renata, because you have been there since the beginning, give us some insight into what you're hearing from people who live there. They're living this in Brunswick. It's definitely something that from the beginning, I've at least gotten the sense that people are kind of ready for it to be over. But they're hoping that when it's over, things will be different. And depending on what people want the verdict is, that may depend either. But I know whenever we're here and there's a whole row, I, I don't know if I've seen um, quite a media presence like this. They have a whole media row. And it's right off one of the main streets, the main one when you're going right into downtown. So people see that we're here. Like, it's very visible. And even if they don't see all of this, they see us. We have the First Coast News Jackets. They know why we're here. And it it's kind of, it, it's a hit or miss based on whether people want to bring it up to you and talk about it because it's so personal and emotional. But we've been hearing from the beginning here that, you know, once everyone else is gone, these guys are still going to be here. We'll still be here because we're still our coverage area. Like yeah. We care about everybody, so yeah. we'll be here as well. Yeah. But they are kind of feeling like I if this would hurry it up, that would be best for them. Yeah. I know with jury selection, it was every single day was kind of like, all right, let's 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 get this going. Now that it's going, we still might have a ways to go because we're in week five and the state was still hearing testimony from their witnesses. Renata, your insight is so important because you're right there right now in the thick of things. Um, can you explain to us what's going on behind you right there? And by the way, if you're just now joining us, um, Renata is right in front of the Glynn County Courthouse where court is set to resume at nine, nine o'clock in just uh, six minutes from now. And they have been going starting on time uh, lately. So it is likely will begin at nine. So explain to us what's happening right now behind you. Yeah, so right now I know um, we were speaking about how at eight o'clock we had all of the pastors and religious community leaders out here talking about how they wanted justice for Ahmad. That's where right now, this is how it kind of looks sometimes. It doesn't look like you can see it that well, but there are people just kind of hanging out. And it's a lot of the religious leaders who were here before. They'll come up and talk to us. Um, many of them were kind of, I thought, got the sense as well that when there were groups of people here from all over the first couple, the first week from those few buses and everything, they were kind of like, wow, this this is a lot for like Little Brunswick, but not, this isn't how it usually is. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of the flashbacks back to 2020 in the mm -hmm. summer when we were here covering the protests and everything. But yeah, right now, that doesn't look like there's um too many of the people who normally sit under the tent over here that the Transformative Justice Coalition has. We also don't yet have a tent up for the religious leaders because they'll sometimes have a tent over this way that is kind of, there's a sign, I forget exactly what it says, it might say like, come talk to a clergy member or something to that effect. Yeah. And so they're, they're here, they're a presence that's always here as well, but there is a lot of kind of sitting out here and waiting, especially right. for, you know, Ahmaud Arbery's um, aunt, Diane Jackson, she's here every single day, and they're mostly just sitting there and praying together. So we expect to see that again today. You mentioned the tent for the clergymen. That's for the um, uh, Glenn Clergy for Equity, about 50 or so faith-based groups from all 
across Blaine County have come together uh, to form that group. And they're there every day to pray with people um, as needed. You can walk right up if you need to. I'm, I've been out there, you know, several times. As you know, Renata, I'm back and forth. I'll likely be back there again on uh, Thursday. And folks, if you are just now joining us, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the murder trial. Three men right now, they are standing on trial in the shooting death for Ahmaud Arbery. The three men, Travis and Greg McMichael, as well as William uh, Bryan, all there in Brunswick, Georgia. This is a, a small community with a national spotlight on them right now. This is not easy for anyone involved or that community, as well as we just heard Renata say, a lot of people are weary. They're ready for this to be over with, but um, it's now day eight we're going into of our testimony. So to give you a heads up, again, in just three minutes, we're expecting court to resume. Um, prosecutors are set to call the medical examiner as their first witness today. Uh, Renata, thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate it. We'll be hearing from you again uh, throughout this uh, trial for sure right here as we continue to cover this uh, closely. You can always cover, follow Renata on Twitter right now. Renata, what's your Twitter account because you are following this in detail? Yeah, yeah, we're live tweeting all, all of it. It's uh, Renata r-e-n-a-t-a-f-c news first okay. coast so so right there it's it's uh, written on your screen right now renata's name right there it's a little it's a, a different name it's a cute name by the way okay renata thank you again for your time we really do appreciate it folks we're going to go ahead and turn things over right now because court like i said has been starting on time recently at uh 9 a.m and again prosecutors are set to call the medical examiner as their first witness this morning this is as we enter uh day eight of testimony in this murder trial there in brunswick georgia three men right now on trial in the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery. Renata, again, thank you. And we're gonna go ahead and turn things over right now to uh, inside of the courtroom.